what complementary treatments did you do and find most helpful? I know you mentioned um, Reiki. What are what are what what were some of the the things that you did like dietarily um, and then you know like with healing, holistic healing? Well, I tried to eliminate sugar right away, which I kind of throttled back on that a little bit. <laughs> but um, but I mean. Definitely, I meditate more than an hour every day. And it was really hard. When I first went to Joe to spend his website, I was like, a 45 minute meditation? Who has time for this? And I'm like, somebody wants to get cured of stage four cancer has time for this. And so I do do that. Um, I also do, re I have a Reiki heal. I've tried a couple of different Reiki healers and I go to one like once or twice a month. I found an acupuncturist right away who does a lot of clearing out of stuff. Um, oh, I do a lot of yoga. I just think yoga is, is great. I discovered yoga during my divorce. I got certified as a yoga sculpt instructor, not as a full-fledged yoga instructor, but yoga sculpt with um, core power yoga. And I still do yoga mm, two or three times a week, I think. I just think that's very balancing. I do believe in exercising outside. I mean, I do love exercise classes. I think I heard a couple of oncologists talk about how group exercise, they were talking about, I think it was men with prostate cancer who were in, I don't know, soccer team or something. And they did, their recovery was better than men who are just doing exercise. So group exercise classes are great, but I also think it's so key to be in the out of doors I mean, I try to go barefoot when it's nice because I can just pull up all that really good earth energy. I love trees. I mean, I don't quite always go up and hug them, but just like when I'm running, I'm like, I love you. And, um, and I just really try very hard to be part of the universe that I'm in. I don't feel like when you were talking about all the energy fields, I don't think that there's a boundary between our boundary, between our body and the universe that surrounds us. I think we're all part of one big organism. And so like there's, I forget which meditation I listened to, but there's one where you're just not, you're trying not to be a being. You're, you're just, I'm just like, I'm just another particle in the universe. Mm -hmm. And I just think that gets more flow going between us and our body, our bodies and the world around us. And it's healthy for our bodies so yeah less separation more oneness and um did you ever play with language i know a lot of people when they are dealing with cancer they don't want to say the word cancer they call it their you know temporary house guest or did you <laughs> did you do anything with language well one thing i did was like one of my daughters said once said well when when you got sick i'm like i never got sick i said i got a diagnosis so what I do is for a while, I wouldn't even say anaplastic thyroid cancer because I thought that gave it power. But then I thought, no, name it. But so I always talk about the diagnosis. I don't even make it my diagnosis so that it's a, a temporary thing. And I always, um, and this is because I do a lot of talking with the universe. I'm always using positive active tense stuff like I am cured, I am healthy, I am disease free. Some people, um, say there's a phrase that some people use no evidence of disease and i'm like i say disease free so that's sort of very positive active tense self-talk i am also a big i mean i'm a writer but i journal i keep a gratitude journal that i hand write my everyday journal i do type into because I, I just type fast mm -hmm. and um so i think words are can be Words can be very healing and they can also hurt, but they can be very healing. And I try to use them in a healing way. Yes. Bernie Siegel, who I filmed yes. for Heal, but I couldn't keep him in the film for just a number of reasons, but he's a brilliant man. And I like love mm -hmm. that. But he said, words, words, words can become, if you write it out, words, 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 depending on where you start, it becomes very quickly swords, swords, swords. Oh, wow. Yeah. I forgot. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cause I read a couple, like one of my, a dear friend of mine who had had breast cancer several years earlier. I was like, have you heard of Bernie Siegel? And he's like, oh, it's a well-thumbed book in my house. And <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. He's one of the OGs and uh, yes. love him to death. To yes. life, love him to life with our language. Yes, I know. Um, 
what I guess like what has now that you're you know three years thriving what you know what's your mission now what is it what is what is kind of next for Kate well I mean I'm trying I want to keep writing more stuff about i about all these lessons I've learned about our mindset and how so many false beliefs have been ingrained in me so that that's a big thing is just to fight that in society by writing essays or or speaking because I am getting emails from people and um and I am so I am like so happy to just talk to people about being positive so now if a friend has like hits a bump with something they call me and I'm like here this is what I think this is great that you're doing this I'm sending them resources and stuff and the other thing is I the universe has now hit this me with this twice like um I was listening to something called a podcast where two oncologists were interviewing a third oncologist which this sounds like a setup for a joke but it's not but <laughs> but they three um, oncologists walked into a bar three yeah. I did. I'm, I'm gonna work on that but um and they asked the the, the oncologist they're interviewing what is the top number one thing to prevent cancer? And she goes, clean up the environment. And I'm like, oh, that's a good one. And then I just got an invitation. I am a member of the League of Women Voters in Utah and their speaker at their annual lunch next week is a, it's doctors for cleaning up the, cleaning up the climate. And I'm like, okay, you've told me twice now, I hear it. So, I mean, I always very much was, an environmentalist, but I'm like, this is something I really have to put energy into now. Yeah. So those are my, my two uh, new causes that um, one, just educating people about the power of mindset and loving yourself and realizing if someone treats you badly, just put up a fence. Yeah. You don't have to, that is not, you, know, you don't deserve that. You deserve to be loved and respected. And then the other thing is I don't want anybody else to have to call up their kid and say, I have stage four cancer and six months to live. Even worse, I don't want a kid to have, a parent to have that happen with a kid. And um, so I just think fighting for a cleaner environment, doing everything I can along those lines is key. Thank you for listening to The Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. And make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And please rate and review us so that we can grow and reach more people. Thanks so much and be well.